Hi, I'm Dr. Natalia Bogopolska. Hi, I'm Dr. Kendria Hart. Hi, I'm Jennifer Gann. Recently, I've had many parents and teachers tell me, I really wasn't planning on teaching again remotely this fall, or I really don't know how to be a homeschool teacher for my team. So what we'd like to do in this video today is talk about what are executive functioning skills and what are some tips and strategies to help build and develop those skills so that your child can experience success this fall and later on in life. So executive functioning um, is a term that we use that describes skills that are useful not only in getting things done in school, but in life in general. Executive functioning is the ability to plan, to organize, to initiate tasks. There's several different abilities that fall within executive functioning. Executive functioning occurs in the part of the brain that is considered the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is the last part of our brain to develop. It's actually beginning to develop around preschool age and is fully developed around 23, 25. So oftentimes when we feel like, you know what? I shouldn't have to remind my kiddo to finish this homework or to jump on the Zoom at this time. In reality, we may have to remind them because that part of the brain is still developing. Earlier parts of the brain that developed are more akin to what we may find in animal kingdom. They allow us to stay alive. They allow us to breathe and regulate our, our bodily functions and also allow us to know when we're in danger and how to react to danger. So what we have found in research is that the more stressed the person is or the more that they feel they may be in danger or feeling anxious, the less they are able to access the prefrontal cortex. So during this time period, it may be more difficult for young people to access these executive functioning skills that are still developing because they're also having to deal with the stress and anxiety that may come with being in a remote learning environment during a pandemic. And I'd like to add to that, based on Dr. Peg Dawson and Dr. Richard Guare's book, Executive Skills for Children and Adolescents, there are 11 domains of executive functioning. So the first might be task initiation. So thinking of yourself, did I start that task or did I procrastinate? Sustained attention. Can I pay attention to this even if I'm bored or feeling tired? Flexibility. I don't really think I can achieve my goal the way I plan to because this obstacle is in the way, but I think I have another way. Emotional control and response inhibition kind of go hand in hand. Let's say your boss says something to you on a project you've been working on and you really want to give the sarcastic response, but you hold back because you want to maintain that positive relationship with them in order to achieve that goal. Goal-directed persistence. Everything you're doing is to strive for that success that you have set for yourself. Keeping in mind your short-term goals to achieve your long-term goal. Planning. Can I prioritize and know what are the tasks and steps that I need to achieve that goal and what should I do first? Organization. So whether it's physical or digital, do I know where things are or am I constantly misplacing my belongings? Time management. Do I realize how long that task will take me? Is it realistic? And do I have a good sense of how much time is left? Working memory. Am I able to use previously learned information to apply it to the current task and follow multi-step directions? And finally, metacognition. How reflective am I? Do I ask myself, did I do well on that? Did I not do so well? What can I do differently? So recognizing we have strengths and needs in our executive skills. So I think there's a lot of really simple strategies that parents and teachers can use that can really help students with executive functioning. You know, we need to think about the biological aspect of our students. What helps to keep our body flowing and going, right? So healthy snacks, healthy meals, water, enough sleep. All of these things are so important for our brains and our bodies to function, especially during this time of extra stress. Each kid's going to need a place that is kind of their home base, right? I would also suggest a basket for each student or some kind of a bin, a container to keep all those things in because we know what that backpack looks like, right? You can't find anything in the backpack. So trying to help kids with things like timers, uh, rewards, so maybe, uh, you know, do this first and then you get 
this uh, 10 minute break. I wanna just echo Jen's idea about a timer in terms of task completion. Getting started is oftentimes the hardest part, but to get finished, if you just set a timer and say, I'm gonna work for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever your capacity is, and I'm gonna be diligent, and then I'm gonna take a break. It actually works better than saying, I just have to get this done. Saying I'm gonna work for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, chunks it, it's manageable. We're much more productive than looking at the whole thing and think I've gotta get all this work done. Things that I would also suggest might be a schedule. You can buy things like this at the dollar aisle, at Target or online. You can have magnets that can move from day to day. Also using sticky notes. For some people, they really like the tangible. So you can either write your checklist out and then write each item that you need to do on a sticky note, almost creating a vision board and take one off as you do each task. You can also move the sticky notes around, prioritizing them, putting them on your calendar so you know when things are due and that addresses planning and time management. There are also many, many apps that mm. teens can use either on their phone or on their laptop mm. for time management, mm. uh, productivity, mm. homework reminders, mm. things like that. If you have access to sheet protectors or any kind of a plastic covering, these are great with uh, dry erase markers. You can use different colors. Uh, you can mark on your children's work, so if they need help with something, you could write on here and then they can erase it off. Headphones can also really support children with uh, keeping their thoughts and, and everything, you know, kind of shutting out that outside world. I think that if we break it down into small manageable steps or habits, the moment I wake up in the morning, I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to get dressed, even though I'm at home, I'm not going to stay in my pajamas. I'm going to turn on my computer and I'm going to log on. These are things that are just habits we can create before we even start trying to learn and organize. Getting used to that routine will minimize some of the stress and keeping it very, very simple. We'll get to the work later, the learning later, but let's just start with getting on the Zoom or whatever type of remote learning session on time. That's half the battle. Now that we're in the same environment all day long, I'm at home, or maybe if I'm at school, I'm confined to my classroom or a specific pod area. So having those rituals to help us go in between or from task to task, maybe it's a two minute break, maybe it's music, maybe it's a snack break. Consistent rituals really can help us to stay uh, on throughout our schedule. So visualize all those steps in your mind before they even happen. Almost like looking into the future or creating a movie in your mind. A reward effort, so lots of positive reinforcement. Maybe it's with breaks, maybe it's with snacks, maybe it's just a high five or a sticky note. Really defining for yourself what makes you feel successful. What is your long-term goal? What is your short-term goal? And maybe your long-term goal isn't really something you want to do, so you're not really feeling motivated, but you know it needs to get done. And think of it as a means to an end. In addition, encouraging our student or our child to do a self-reflection at the end of the day or at the end of the week. So using those metacognition skills to say, hmm, what did I do well and what can I do better? And as we are helping them to develop these strategies, one of the ways to transition it so that it is more intrinsic to the young person or whoever, um, your student or your child, so that you're not always in that vein of having to do what we call being the frontal lobe mm -hmm. uh, for young people. You can begin to ask questions. Did you set your schedule for tomorrow? What do you want to prioritize for this week? Asking the questions helps the young person to then begin to develop their own ability to plan ahead. So again, you're you're giving some of that autonomy to the young person, you're helping them to think through it. And then eventually the goal is that they don't need you to ask those questions. They begin to ask that of themselves. And that's when they become even more self-regulatory. Thanks for tuning in. And we hope that these strategies are helpful to both you and your students. And we also really want to encourage that homeschool communication uh, because that's where it's at and you can find strategies that are going to help to bridge that gap between the two and work with your child's specific plan.
And maybe you're not sure which one of the 11 domains to start with first, which strategies to use first. You can take a self-assessment quiz that your team can take, you as a teacher can take, or you as a parent can take, and then compare your answers to the teams to see what's the self-awareness like and where is the strongest area of need and also highlight the strengths. Although the prefrontal cortex is developing up through the mid-20s, we are developing our executive functioning skills throughout life. I won't even tell you how old I am, but I'm still working on time management, organization, and task completion. So be patient with your young people. They're gonna get there, and your support and encouragement are gonna go a long ways. Thank you.